the zero of a polynomial are just all the solutions to f of x equals 0. So basically, these are the x-intercepts, where a particular polynomial crosses the x-axis. And you find that by taking the whole polynomial, setting it equal to 0, and solve. And those values of x that you find are sometimes called the zeros of a polynomial. It's just those values of x that if you plug into the polynomial, they produce 0. That's why they're called the zeros of the polynomial. Now, it turns out that if you just know, in some cases, if you just know one zero of a polynomial, then in fact, you'll be able to find all the zeros. And I want to illustrate this technique and also bring together the idea of the factor theorem and synthetic division and some other things, try to tie ideas together here by looking at some simple examples. f of x equals x cubed minus 2x squared minus 5x plus 6. And I tell you that x equals 1 is a 0 of this. Now I want you to find all the zeros. So what do I do? Well, if that's a 0, that means that f evaluated at 1 equals 0. And you can check. By putting a 1 here, I see 1 minus 2 is negative 1. Negative 1 and minus 5 is negative 6. And 6 is 0. It checks. This really is a root. Well, by the factor theorem, if this equals 0, that means x minus 1 is a factor. So if this is a factor, then what does that mean? If I divide it through into this, it should go in evenly, no remainder, and I can then see what's left. So let's now do a synthetic division. I flip the sign, 1, make a house, write down the coefficients, 1 minus 2 minus 5 6. Don't forget to write down all the coefficients. If there wasn't an x squared term in there, we'd put a placeholder of 0 right in here. But since there is one, we don't have to worry about it. And then bring this down and multiply. Now remember, the remainder is going to be here. If this is really a factor, the remainder here should be 0. Let's see if we're OK. 1 times 1, 1. Add minus 1. 1 times minus 1, minus 1. Add minus 6. 1 times minus 6, minus 6. Add 0. Looks great. And this is what's left over. That's the x squared part. That's the x part. That's the constant part. So what I see is f of x, this whole complicated thing, is just x minus 1 times this thing. And so what I see here is f of x equals x minus 1. There's the factor. And when I divide it out, I see an x squared minus x minus 6. Do you see how I read off the coefficients right there? Now all I've got to do is see if I can factor that. So you can try to factor. I think we'll have better luck here. I hope. x, x. Uh, opposite signs, plus, minus. How about 3 and 2? Looks good to me. What are the zeros? Set equal to 0 and solve. I see either this is 0. That means, so here are the zeros. So zeros of f of x, their x equal, well, 1. That's the one we were told, in fact. So we found it again. That's good. This equals 0 if x equals negative 2. And this equals 0 if x equals 3. So here we see there are three real zeros of this cubic. And so what we see is that, in fact, here they are, 1, minus 2, 3. And just as a little side note, what does this look like graphically? Because I have negative 2 crosses the x-axis there, 1, and then 2, 3. So it crosses here and here. So this one has to look something like this. Shoop, shoop. You see it crosses at minus 2, it crosses at 1, and it crosses at 3. So this one sort of zigzags right through, crosses three times. A lot of possibilities, a lot of things can happen. And it's really neat that using the factor theorem, I can actually report all the zeros just knowing 1 on a cubic. Have some fun with these. I actually think these are pretty cool. Just be careful with the synthetic division. Enjoy.